Welcome to the study. This is Professor Hemlock here today bringing you guys a Necro Lord Arcane Mage guide. So uh, 9.0.5 is dropping on Tuesday the 9th. This is pretty exciting news. Uh, with that drop, we are going to see a large buff to Necro Lord, and that will make it be very, very competitive in Mythic Plus and Raid content. As we've kind of seen these last few weeks, I've been trying to make Necro Lord work, and I think I've discovered what will probably be the best build using Necro Lord. And I wanted to go over what that looks like today for everyone. So, jumping into talents first, I do prefer the traditional uh, build we've been running in Mythic Plus for a long time, uh, outside of the Crane build where you're doing Encanters and Enlightened. Using Overpowered Rune and Resonance, this is just going to perform the best with Necro Lord, with how Deathborn functions as really funneling a lot of your damage into major cooldowns. Overpowered and Rune of Power is simply going to be the best option. For Raid, you will be running the traditional Raid build with Rune and Overpowered as well, but you'll be changing out Resonance for Arcane Echo, and that'll really be your only difference for talents. For Soulbinds here, Amani is the best Soulbind across the board, and it's not even close. <laughs> it is just not even close. Uh, what makes Amani so powerful is Lead by Example. Lead by Example essentially gives you a 5% Intellect buff whenever you cast Deathborn, and then for every additional person in your party, you get a 2% bonus if they're within a 10-yard range. So they do need to be within the radius of that uh, little circle, when you cast Deathborn, then you will get that benefit per person uh, available. So that's something to note. You want to make sure when you're casting Deathborn that you're near as many people as possible, unless it is positionally dis... Uh, uh, you know, it's not good to do, right? If you're risking your positioning, that is something you'll want to avoid. But for the most part, I find it to be reasonably easy to achieve. The number one best potency conduit is Magi's Brand. Uh, pretty straightforward here. It's going to make it so you do an insane amount of damage uh, in those Touch of the Magi windows. Since we're running Rune, since Deathborn is really a damage-increasing ability, it only makes sense that Magi is going to perform the best. Now, for Raid and Mythic Plus, you got uh, two different slots, which is really nice because you don't actually need to change Soulbinds. You just need to flip this little pathway here. So if you're doing Raid... Arcane Prodigy is going to be by far the best secondary potency slot to run. And that is because since Deathborn is a three minute cooldown, if you run Arcane Prodigy, you'll use missiles to essentially get your Arcane Power to be a short enough cooldown to where you can use Arcane Power in between Deathborn goes. So you'll line up your Deathborn and Arcane Power on the first major go. You'll then be able to funnel your missiles out you get the cooldown of your Arcane Power low enough again, you're able to use Arcane Power with a Touch of the Magi go in between another Deathborn go, and then you have Deathborn Arcane Power for the next go. So that is uh, definitely the best pathway to use for Amani in a raid situation. However, when you're in Mythic Plus, you'll be using the two defensive conduit slots, and you use Gnashing Chompers. So this little dude right down here at the bottom, you get a 3% haste buff for 10 seconds. It has stacks up to a maximum of 15% haste bonus, and it uh, happens every time you kill a mob. It also refreshes every time you kill a mob. So the longer you're able to maintain those stacks, the better it's going to get. Uh, generally speaking, I have around 25% uptime for Gnashing Chompers throughout the course of a dungeon. So for 25% of the time, you're maintaining a moderate haste benefit. Uh, and this is definitely valuable, and it does beat out Prodigy. So something to note, uh, you will want to just make sure you remember to swap these back and forth between Raid and Mythic+. Plus. And that is pretty straightforward. Your build you'll be using across the board. For PvP... You have the option to use Plague Divisor. The big reason is Ultimate Form here. Ultimate Form essentially makes it so your Fleshcraft makes you immune to CC, heals you, and uh, is almost like a other defensive option. On Tuesday, Fleshcraft is getting a buff where it's going from a four second cast time down to a three second cast time. 
It gives you a 30% reduction in damage taken while channeling, and it also grants 40% absorb based on your HP. So that is massive. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. Uh, if you're in a situation where you're worried about dying in Mythic Plus Raid or PvP, you will actually be wanting to cast Fleshcraft. Uh, and that is just not how it's uh, normally been. So this is great. I, I really love the change. Fleshcraft is going to feel really nice uh, moving forward. And that is another defensive option. So as mages, we already have great defensive options with barrier, block, mirror images, and invis. We now will have an additional defensive option with Fleshcraft. Essentially, you're going to have no reason to die as a mage in a key anymore. Unless the tank's dead, <laughs> you will be able to stay alive in every single situation. So this is great news. It makes it even easier to soak mechanics. So uh, we got the soul bind down. Uh, we've got our specs down. The big difference now comes into dungeon differences. So with Plaguefall and Theater of Pain, you actually have utility now. In Theater of Pain, it's very straightforward. There is banners that are throughout the dungeon. They're very straightforward as far as use. Essentially, whenever you run into them, see a banner, hit a banner. Banner gives a 10% versatility bonus and a small movement speed bonus as well. It is a large area of effect when you use it. It's an aura, basically. So uh, don't feel the need to have everyone stack on top of you. Just smash that banner, and everyone will then gain that bonus when they're around you. It's kind of nice. Plague Falls a little bit more complex. It revolves around Fleshcraft and uh, having uh, absorbing these oozes. So throughout Plague Fall, there is different colored oozes, green, purple, and red. The green uh, slimes, when you use Fleshcraft over the top of them, you will then gain a benefit that will do essentially added area of effect damage to your ability. So pretty straightforward, it's a damage bonus. The purple ones give a 10% damage reduction in damage taken to everyone within 10 yards of you for two minutes. So really nice uh, reduction in damage taken, but I do not think it is best. You will actually typically want to be taking the red slimes whenever you can. The red slimes are by far and above the best. You absorb a red slime, you get a two minute buff for 10% haste within 10 yards of you. A very, very, very good uh, haste buff. It is something you'll want to be absorbing as absolutely as much as possible. And that is in Plaguefall, okay? And that is uh, kind of the breakdown on our Arcane Mage uh, guide for Necrolord. Uh, it's going to be viable. It's going to be fun. You're going to see huge numbers in keys. And when you use that Deathborn ability with AP, those, those numbers just get off the charts. They do so much damage. Uh, so please do not feel like you need to be playing the meta. The difference between Deathborn and any other Covenant is going to be very small. It'll definitely be viable. Uh, and if you enjoy the aesthetics of Necro Lord or just the play style, you can absolutely feel safe and comfortable playing a Necro Lord mage. I hope everyone has enjoyed the video today. Uh, if you liked it, you know what to do. Subscribe to the channel. Toss a little like over to me. My cat just jumped off the desk. <laughs> uh, shook the camera a bit and uh, yeah we'll see everyone next week I will be playing Venthyr next week <laughs> I've got my quest completed once we turn that thing in we will be a Venthyr arcane mage and I'll be doing a lot of playtesting next week uh, just to see how viable it actually ends up being looking forward to it hope everyone has a great day